Okay, this is B Cotton. I'm going to give a aquaponics update for Pond Boss. Um, I'm starting in. I'm starting indoors with uh, what I've got going on in here as far as you know breeding and feed training, and then I'll work my way outside to my aquaponics system. Um, this is my male bluegill. Um, I've not named him. He's built a little nest. You can see where he's dug all the way down to the glass bottom. He is. He's hungry. He wants to get fed. Um, here's one of the three females in here. Uh, I put terracotta pots. There's another one. There's there's a third one somewhere. Uh, that's in between. The one on the bottom is small, and the one on the top is the biggest one, and there's one in the middle. I have the terracotta pots so that they have space to kind of get out of line of sight because the male becomes aggressive sometimes and chases them all around. There's the other one. Um, he's got the big ear, ear lobe, and... He's constantly pruning his little nest. Sometimes it's not all the way down to the glass. There's a little thin layer of rocks. I can tell he's been moving it around. Uh, that's really all here. I've not seen. I've never successfully raised bluegill. I've never had a successful spawn. This is the first year I've tried. I'm also. You can. I have the. the you can see there. I have the lights on a timer. It's going to be on 16 hours off 8. I've also, you can see in the back, I have a couple of little aquarium heaters. I just recently brought the water temperature up to 78 degrees from, you know, 70 degrees. And it did seem that the male got a little more vigorous about his territory after that happened. I don't know, you know, 72 degrees should be enough for spawning, but they've been in this tank all winter. So there was no real season change. My hunch was just maybe a water change, um, a little bit of a water temperature change could trigger a, a change. Um, I'll, I'll just touch on this. This is my API test kit. This is what I consider the minimum for aquaponics. It does nitrate, nitrite, ammonia, pH up, or the high pH and low pH. Uh, and I have this this little thing does temperature and pH, but I don't have it calibrated for pH. I just use it for water temperature. It seems to stay accurate. Over here I have about five black crappie left. Or no, they're not black. They're I'm sorry, they're hybrid crappie. I have five hybrid crappie left and two regular sunfish. I'm trying to feed train them. Not having good success. They, the only thing I can get the crappie to eat is blood worms. And right here I have one little thick capsule of blood worms and one little cube of beef heart. I can't even get them to eat the beef heart. The red ears will eat the beef heart. Um, I consider beef heart kind of the next step. Uh, I, turn, I keep the light off except for when I'm feeding them to kind of help with the feed aggression. You can tell there's a couple little particles of regular fish food in there. I'm not... Sh these red ears, sun these are, these red ears sunfish I don't think are will eat those pellets yet. Uh, they, they'll they sometimes pick them off the ground. That's typically the first thing they'll do. They, they don't like to eat from the surface, but eventually they, they do learn. I'm not as worried about the red ears learning how to feed train them, but the crappie, um, they were th the crappie were this big when I got them. They're skinny. They look emaciated. They have even a little bit of fungus on them. That it, It's been worse. Some of them, you know, I've, I, I started with about a dozen, and we're down to five, so... It's been it's been rough with these, with these crappie. The placo in the back, he'll he'll clean up all the food, and it won't get left there very long. So I, I'm not worrying about scooping stuff up that doesn't get eaten. Um, right now I have a hundred gallon stock tank inside as well. This has some small largemouth bass. It's it's kind of tough to see, and some more red ears. Uh, I do soak my little bitty pellets. Before I throw them in there, usually it makes them sink, but I haven't soaked them very long. The the red ears don't like to eat at the surface. The the largemouth bass have already learned how to feed. How to, none of, none of these fish were feed trained when I bought them, and obviously some of them are now. Uh, I haven't had any deaths in probably three weeks, maybe four weeks. So I think all of them are eating something. Um, that some of them may only eat when it sinks. Um, what I'm using is just a cichlid pellet, small cichlid pellets, if you can see. Uh, some of these float, some of them sink. The pink ones, 
actually float, in, but if you soak them long enough, they'll sink. And then there's some little bitty brown ones um, that always sink. This little 10 gallon aquarium just has a couple of little one inch tilapias that I found in my sump. So let's go outside. Uh, for, for my aeration, I'm using a, I get, I forget the name of it, but it's a Eco Plus 7. Yeah, that's right. And it runs only to the aquaponic system. Um, I have another 100 gallon tank outside. This was just for crayfish. That Eco, that Eco Plus is loud. I'm sorry about that. This was just for, this was intended just for crayfish. I have some marbled crays in here. Um, I was raising them as a supplemental food source, but I had all of these pots in the aquaponics sump and I moved them into, into here and apparently they had a bunch of fathead minnow eggs. And so there's hundreds of fathead minnows. You may be able to see the assorted sizes. I also have a few baby tilapia in here that I accidentally came across yesterday. They, they're in a big bunch of school. There's one little tilapia in there. I don't think, I'm not sure you can see that, but usually they run, most of them run around in a school of about 30. And they're usually near the top, but I don't see them right now. There's algae and duckweed on the top, but the minnows will eat it, and when the tilapia get bigger, they'll completely annihilate it. So let's go. Uh, I have five IBCs. Uh, the two the two low IBCs actually count as a sump, but I'm using one as a fish tank, and um, I'll show you. My water quality is actually bad right now. I had some algae in the far tank and nothing to clean it up. So yesterday I put the aerator, the little aerator bubbles in there to kind of agitate it, and it made all of my. I'll go ahead and feed these. This tank has mostly catfish. You can see the albinos probably. Um, there's a few albinos that I got from Pond King up in Gainesville and the little bitty channel cats that you can see. Um, I got those when they were half that size from Overton down in Buffalo, Texas. Uh, but yeah, they'll come up and eat. The, the, the food I'm feeding them, um, I got a bag of 50, a 50 pound bag of some high 40, 40 percent protein or so pellets from Overton and some of it is actually Aquamax that I ordered. Um, and the Aquamax 400, it, some of them sink, so the, they eat those before they come up to eat all the ones on the surface, they're shy. Okay. There's no fish in the, well, there may be some minnows and maybe some fry that I snuck in, but the sump has really no fish in it. Um, there's a 1,000 gallon, or 3,000 gallon per hour pump that I have diverting off into all the fish tanks. Um, I had to do some extra overflows because I what the little one inches going to the grow beds weren't draining all of the fish tank they were still filling up so I have little overflows. Also you can tell I added the I have a I can plug in the gutter when my water gets low and I catch rain. Right now the water's high so I have it detached. Oh, so it's really hard to see these guys. Most there's bluegill in here, there's tilapia in here, and there's a few. There's six little hybrid stripers in here, and a few goldfish. Some of the gold things you see are goldfish. Some of the gold things you see are actually tilapia, but they they get really rambunctious when I feed them. They're some of them will come up to the top. If you see any little you know, four inch long, they're the hybrid stripers. They run in little packs, but when they feed, they're just little missiles, little torpedoes. Uh, way different from everybody else. Oh, I haven't shown you the, the aerators. So those are my little aerators. I have two of them coming off of that, that Eco Plus. I keep I keep them in the low ones because I don't want to overflow if my power goes out. So I keep them in the small IBCs and that's why they're not in the, the bigger ones. I actually have some more hybrid stripers in here. There's probably about 18 of them. I, I kind of missed there. But there they go. Yeah, these little guys, they never stop swimming. And uh, they're, 
they're the ones that are most sensitive to water quality, so that's why I have them in here with the with the aerator. Okay, and they'll they'll make short work of those pellets. Some of them sink. So I'm coming around to the side. Here's the one on the end. This is where I had the algae problem. Since I have small, you can see the little small fish in here maybe. They're mostly largemouth bass. There's some, there's a couple of, they should all be radar sunfish, but a couple of them are bluegills. Um, I, I found that after the fact. Um, I've mixed in some of the Aquamax and some of the smaller pellets because these are small fish. But I, I don't have any right size tilapia for this. My tilapia are either too small or too big. So I can't keep them in here to, to control the algae. So this is why um, I, I dropped that aerator, the air stone in here yesterday and it, it kind of, it cleaned up all the, it, it just kind of uh, surged up all of the algae and it moved it throughout the system. Some of it ended up in the grow bed, some of it ended up in the other tanks, but all the other tanks have at least a couple tilapia in them, even the striper tank. So, um, you know, it, it gets controlled. By, by them. I also have a Placo in here, but he's tiny, and he really hadn't made a dent, as that we can tell. So I'll move on to growth. Uh, my grow beds, the little dead-looking plants on the right are were spinach, and they bolted and made seeds, and then and they die. That's natural. Uh, I have a couple corn stalks. Um, you can see all of the cabbage that's bolted. Um, I just really haven't been maintaining my garden. I've been really focused on other thing, other projects. I think these are loofahs, and I'm not sure. <laughs> Let me get up. So all the little bitty plants are actually... It's a lettuce, arugula. Um, I had arugula in here. They bolted and dropped all their seeds and now I have a billion little baby arugula plants all over the place which is good for right now since I'm not really maintaining this you can see all the arugula over there uh, that I, I'm pretty sure that's a cucumber plant looks really healthy um, some cat grass a weed um, pulling up weeds easy just kind of shake off the media you're done uh, those are edamame that got eat up by insects aphids I have a psyllum over here, which is intended to bring in ladybugs, another weed. Get rid of this little guy. Um, the idea is to bring in ladybugs and other predators to kill aphids so that that doesn't happen, but edamame soybeans are just too good. But these little yellow squashes that are just getting going um, have no, I think this is a mustard plant. More cabbage that bolted. Uh, some things that never came up because I, I sowed. Um, I, you can see the fish still. I think that was a hybrid striper, little guy. They just came to the top, but they're still eating. The catfish are done. I'll probably not feed as much next time because I'd expect all their food to be gone by now. I'll probably scoop all that stuff up. Um, all the food's gone over there. And all the food's gone down there. So that's kind of what I've got going on right now. This this much gallon of water in this fish load, I could probably keep, I, I would guess, six or eight of these grow beds with nutrients. So right now, you know, I'm really appreciating these, these little arugulas coming up. It's just gonna be a little packed jungle in here, um, eating up nitrates while I work on my other system. Uh, my other system is going to be ferro cement. It's using cement. Right now, this one's curing. It's full of water. Most of this was rain rainwater. I'm not just wasting uh, water filling up big big 800 gallon tanks. But um, this is going to be the first tank. Um, I hope to build more. Assuming this all goes well, I'm going to have a ferro cement grow bed come out here, and then it's actually I'm going to cascade grow beds down the the grow bed down or down the down the slope of my property. Um, you can see I have a couple of not aquaponics related. Uh, those are apple trees and on the left there's a, there's a couple of peach trees. You can see where um, I've also started my grape trellis. I'm gonna have about a few rows of grapes. So 
that's my aquaponic system. 